What is up everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert. Today we're going to do things a little bit differently. I've asked Jeremy to go out and find some reaction videos, but with a positive twist. You know, all too often we see reaction videos that are slanted in a negative light and they tend to get good views for whatever reason. But I don't want to take this channel in that direction. I want to keep positivity alive and put positive vibes out into the universe. So what Jeremy's done is he actually went out and found a three-part series by April Wilkerson on how she builds a board on board fence. Now I haven't watched it, but I trust Jeremy when he says that she does a good job and the end result looks great. So what today is, is the part one of a three part series on me positively reviewing uh, April Wilkerson's video on how to build a board on board fence. All right, but before we get into the video, I need you to do a couple things for me. If you find the video helpful, educational, heck even entertaining, it would mean the world to us if you gave it a like. Also, if you're new here, go hit that subscribe button. And when you do, be sure to set the notifications bell to all so that YouTube lets you know each and every week when we have new content available. All right, with that being said, let's get into the review. This is Joe Evers, the fence expert. My family's been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. All right, here we go. Okay, a lot to do this week, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna be replacing our standard picket fence with a board on board fence with a nice top cap and trim. I'm gonna be going with pre-stained cedar material that I purchased from a local uh, fencing supplier. And it was actually cheaper to get the material pre-stained than it was to get the material uh, and stained separately. All right, so we've talked about this before, uh, pre-staining versus staining after the fact. Uh, I like pre-staining only because, or mainly because, uh, you can really stain in around all the nooks and crannies, all the faces get stained uh, before you put it up. That way you're not having to worry about, you know, where the board meets uh, like the cross rail. Uh, but April brings up a good point. A lot of times you can pre buy pre-stained cedar pickets for less than what it would cost to buy the pickets and stain separately, and then you still have to stain it. So definitely look into that if you're looking at replacing your fence. Now, we got really lucky with the previous owner of the house because he installed a concrete footer the entire perimeter of the fence, which is roughly 290 feet. And he also installed these three and a half inch steel posts. So right off the bat, saving a lot of money because we're not gonna have to replace any of the posts. However- Yeah, so I like this. I mean, she's already off to a great start. Uh, I like the idea of the concrete footer. Uh, some people call it a weed barrier, uh, but yeah, basically, a a concrete, a short concrete wall all around the fence after the posts were set so it encompasses the post, uh, keeps you from having to weed eat under the fence, that sort of thing. Uh, so she's using, or, or they have used steel posts, which is great. I mean, I always, I'm always a proponent of steel posts, but uh, they're three and a half inch posts, which uh, is an odd size. So chain link post, uh, steel galvanized post, uh, you know, that typically in this size range, they'd come in a two and a half uh, or two and three eighths, which is two and a half, a two and seven eighths, which is a three inch, and then it steps up to four inch. Um, so I'd, I've never heard of a three and a half inch post, but uh, I like the fact that they're steel posts and that uh, looks like they're galvanized. Any of the posts. However, they will need to be extended in order to give the board on board fence the full support that it needs. And that's actually where I'm going to get started. I first had to go around to all the poles and knock off the PVC cap that was placed on them. Now unfortunately all these poles are not cut to the same height. So what I did is grabbed a stick and cut it to exactly 73 inches. I'm interested to see how she extends these posts. Um, this is a question we get a lot. and So the question we get most often is if you have a four foot fence and you want to make it a six foot fence or a six foot up to eight. Um, and there's really, there's not a great DIY solution to that. Um, so I'm excited to see how she does it. Now we can see on this right post, she's already has a piece of pipe on top of that. Uh, so I'm interested to see how she how she goes about affixing that. And attach a tape measure to it so I could hold it next to the pole and very quickly read how tall it, each extension needed to be. Now to actually cut the extensions, I'm going to be using my Triton multi-stand for support and a Milwaukee porta band to make the cuts. This porta band was really cool because I think most people are familiar with porta bands, but the stand that Milwaukee produces turns it into a stationary unit. That stand is nice. Uh, so we use 
we use the band saws, the battery powered band saws. Uh, Porta Band is Milwaukee's uh, name for it, I guess. Uh, but this stand is incredibly interesting. Uh, it locks that steel post in place, and then uh, it it almost acts like a chop saw with uh, with that with a portable band saw. Um, almost like it turns into a table saw. So that all I had to do was secure the piece of pipe and then make the cut. And when I was using this, I didn't apply much pressure. I would just let the weight of the tool more or less progress the cut for me. So that's a great point. Uh, when you're using band saws, you let the saw do the cutting. You don't apply pressure. Uh, if you do apply pressure, typically what you'll see is that band, uh, the band is, a, is essentially revolving around two wheels. So if you apply pressure, then it's going to, uh, that band is going to jump off those wheels. It can jump the tracks and that, that band is under some pressure. So when it comes off those wheels, it doesn't do it gently. Now, of course, I'm using three and a half inch diameter pipes since those are what my poles are already at. But if you have smaller diameter, then you can just find matching material. After I cut each extension, I would go ahead and place it on the pole it was meant for and just double check that it was to the height needed. With so many poles, it took me three joints of material to get all the extensions. I tried to find shade whenever I could and eventually even pulled up a step stool to rest my feet. Since I'm going to be welding these extensions on, I'm going to need access all around the post. Okay, so she's going to be welding them on, which is absolutely the way to do it. Uh, the reason I say there's not a great DIY solution uh, is not everyone has the welder, you know, the welding equipment needed to weld at this, what she's using, 30 half inch pipe. It looked pretty thick wall too. I'd say, you know, it's hard to say, but it looks like a Schedule 40 or a CS40 pipe. So it's going to take a pretty substantial welder. So I grabbed my circular saw and cut a few pickets out of the way behind each and every post. Now these poles are just painted silver. They're not galvanized. But with that said, I had to come through with a grinder and grind off some of the paint so it wouldn't contaminate the weld. So I think that kind of explains the three and a half inch. I would almost bet this is probably oil field pipe, uh, I would guess. But she said it wasn't galvanized and you can kind of see some rust on the top there. It's painted silver, maybe with a Rust-Oleum. Jeremy, do you know where she's from? You know what area? Texas? Yeah, so it's probably oil, oil field pipe, um, which... As long as it's protected, it is, is totally fine. But then I was able to start welding. To weld all of these extensions on, I'm using the Lincoln Electric MIG-210 machine. And I first tried to use a 10-3 extension cord. So she's using a full-size welding machine. Um, so there's, there's a couple different types of machines. Uh, there's the full-size ones that she's using, full-size bottle of gas. It's, it's the full deal. Uh, there's also... Uh, I don't know, some people call them backpack or suitcase welders, smaller versions of the welder. That was kind of what I was curious to see. Uh, the smaller welders, while they do work, would probably struggle with pipe this uh, thick, but she's going she's gonna to use the uh, full-size welder, which is exactly the right deal. But it very quickly tripped the breaker, so I ended up going to the big box store and renting a generator for the day to run the machine off of. And even though it was kind of a hassle moving the generator and the tank and machine around, it worked great. With the help of a few magnets, I would hold the extension on the pole and then tack it in three different places. The magnets are important. That way it keeps the pipe just perfectly in line with the new extension on with the existing pipe. Um, she absolutely knows what she's doing. What the channel, is it like a, what does she do? You can tell she is incredibly knowledgeable about what she's doing. I mean, and when you look at the weld on the one post that she's already done, I mean, granted, it's not close up, but uh, that looks like a nice weld. So April obviously uh, knows quite a lot about what she's doing. Then I would remove the magnet and finish off the weld on one side of the post. I would then move to the outside of the fence and weld the other side. And so what she explained was that she tacked it in three places. That way, uh, she if she had just started the weld on one side without tacking that back side, so as that metal heats up and as it welds itself together, it could it could move that post, the extension. It could she would all she would probably get along to the other side and find that it's got a significantly bigger gap because it pulled itself towards the weld. Uh, but by tacking it in three different places, she made sure that extension stayed exactly where it needed to be. To speed up the process, Cody would go through and grind all of the paint down for me so that I can come back and focus on the welding. No, it doesn't look like she wet the fence down. Um, I, 
I probably would have just out of an abundance of caution. Uh, but I mean, it might have rained recently there. I mean, the boards don't necessarily look wet, but and I don't know that I don't know one way or the other. But I probably would have taken a few minutes and wet that uh, wet that fence down. It wouldn't have affected. I mean, you could dry off the post right where you're welding, and it wouldn't affect it that way. Um, but welding welding puts off quite a lot of heat, and obviously puts off uh, quite a lot of sparks. You'd want to keep an eye on fire. So if you're going to be doing this to your own fence, I would recommend that you pay very close attention to starting fires. I ended up starting about four or five oh. throughout the entire process. You can actually see one starting there right go. there. Oh. We ended up keeping a bowl full of water on standby. Yeah, so garden hose, soak that fence down uh, and the grass around it really well. Because uh, obviously the sparks are falling to the ground, you'd want to make sure that's soaked really well. To give the extensions a coat of protection, I gave them all a quick coat of paint. The colors don't match, but I wasn't concerned since I planned to put boxes around each post. So the previous owner used carriage bolts to attach the panel to these brackets. And I think it would take way too much work to back off all of the nuts and then try to shimmy the panel off as one unit. So instead, I'm going to be taking a shortcut. <laughs> I ended up cutting, cutting the panels just right outside of the metal bracket and I made sure to cut in between pickets so I wouldn't end up hitting a nail. Uh, it's, it's almost exactly how we do fence removal is cut the panels on either side of the post. That way you're still left with a full size panel to do haul offs so uh, they're easier to manage. Doing it this way I still have to remove all the bolts but Instead of having an eight foot panel to remove off six brackets at once, I instead have a one foot section to remove off three brackets. And this was definitely an easier and more fun <laughs> process. All right, moving on to the stringers. Unfortunately, my poles are not spaced exactly eight feet apart, but instead they're closer to 93 inches. So I would take a measurement and cut each stringer to the length needed. To attach the stringers to the post, we're going with quarter inch lag bolts that are an inch and a half long. We would first set one bolt in one side, then make sure that the stringer was level. So one thing we'd probably do just a little bit differently is uh, probably put one lag bolt in one side, take the full 2 by 4 over and just take a battery powered circular saw and zip it right where it needs to be. Um, maybe a little bit more efficient, maybe not. And then continue running the rest of the bolts in. And just a quick tip, I saved close to $100 by purchasing the 700 lag bolts needed through a local supplier instead of the big box store. Okay, so now this is a really big job that I'm going to have to break up over multiple videos. So stay tuned next week for part two where I actually finish the fence by putting up the pickets, the top cap and trim, as well as the boxes around the post. So I will see you then. Looks like her project is off to an incredibly good start. So she's already got all her rails run, at least on this section. She also has that top trim. I'm interested to see how she does the top trim. Here in the Midwest, the uh, the trim isn't as big of a style. Uh, here locally, I don't know anyone that does do it, uh, mainly because our yards aren't nearly you know this flat. Uh, but I'm interested to see how this goes. So guys, that concludes part one of the three-part series of me reacting to April's three-part series. Uh, she's already off to an incredibly good start, and I can't wait to see where she goes from here. All right, guys, so like I said in the beginning, if you found this post helpful, educational, a little bit entertaining maybe, go ahead and give it a like. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell. I've got a couple of videos off to the side of the screen that YouTube thinks that you would really like to see. Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.